team, we have three teams today, and the first team will start by presenting uh, three kinds of rice-related food in Taiwan. Today, we are going to introduce rice dishes in Taiwan. Next slide, please. Many kinds of rice are common in Taiwan, such as japonica rice, glutinous rice, black glutinous rice, and unpolished rice. Rice is used in various types of dishes. It can be used in a main dish, a snack, or wine, such as fried rice, rice balls, mochi, puff rice, or rice wine. Next slide, please. Snacks like mochi or rice cake are made of glutinous rice, which is much stickier. But one should not have too much glutinous rice at one sitting because it is not easy to identify to digest and might lead to indigestion. Next slide. Oh. People around the world usually use locally grown crops to brew wine. For instance, Japanese people in uh, Japanese people usually use rice kernels to brew delicious sake. In Taiwan, there is an abundant harvest of, there is an abundant harvest of rice so the ingredients to to brew Wine is uh, can be easily obtained. Rice wine is used in cooking to add flavor to dishes, so uh, few few people will drink it directly. Although rice wine and Japanese sake are made from same ingredients, but due to the diversity of brewing technique and the different breeds of rice, Taiwanese rice wine isn't so popular. Wow. Rice wine, <coughs> rice wine is commonly used in traditional Taiwanese dishes. It not only brings out the flavor of that dish, but also but also gets rid of the gamey taste of fish and meat. What's more, it can make stir fried eggs light and fluffy. Rice wine is a very useful ingredient commonly used in Taiwan families. Next, we will introduce a delicious snack made from rice, mochi. The traditional way of making mochi is to steam the glutinous rice. Then people use a pestle and a mortar to pound the rice until it all sticks together into a big bowl. It takes a lot of strength to pound the rice, uh, but it makes the mochi chewier. It's very inconvenient and time-consuming to make the mochi in a traditional way. So nowadays, we often just thoroughly mix the glutinous rice flour and water together. It has almost the same effect as the traditional way, uh, but it's much more convenient. Mochi is usually eaten as a snack between meals. Since mochi itself tastes plain, peanut powder and sesame powder are often added to bring flavor. There are also mochis with fillings, such as red beans, sesame, and peanut. Some people also choose chocolate as a filling, creating a combination between Western and Eastern cultures. Now, we will introduce a snack which is a bit similar to popcorn, pop rice. Pop rice was actually created by accident. Rice was stored in bamboo container in the past. One time, a fire broke out and a bamboo container exploded, causing the rice to expand, pop, and become crunchy. Since then, pop rice has become one of the favorite traditional snacks in Taiwan. One thing that is interesting about pop rice is that people can bring their choice of ingredients, such as peanuts or sesame, to the pop rice stand and ask the vendor to add the ingredients they brought. Hmm. Then they will have their customized pop rice. <coughs> this is because people in Taiwan do not normally have their own pop rice machine. The main theory of making pop rice is to allow the pressure in the pressure cooker um, to immediately decrease. This will cause the water in the rice to instantly vaporize and creates a loud noise. Now we will introduce a video about how to make pop rice. 
The vendors will shout, "It's about to pop!" to avoid the passersby of the loud noise. After the rice is popped, it will put in a big pot and add some ingredients such as、uh, raspberries or sesame. Now he is preparing a hot milk syrup, in order、uh, which is later put in a、uh, in a pot to make the pot rice stickier. Uh, he's stirring the uh hot、uh, the pot now, so it it makes sure the syrup distributed in the pot rice. The vendor will now flatten the pot rice in the mold. The vendors often use a rolling pin to flatten the pot rice. They do so in order to make the pot rice more dense, and also to make sure that the mold syrup. Sticks the pop rice together. Since it takes much time for the malt syrup to melt, the vendor is now preparing the malt syrup for the next pop rice. Vendors often use a special kind of ruler to cut the pop rice into rectangular pieces. They do so to make To make the pot rice more easy to be packed, now the vendor is packaging the pot rice. After packaging, the pot rice is now ready for sale. As you can see from the rice-based foods we introduced, rice is a very rice plays a very important part in our daily life. Without rice, we would lose a large portion of our traditional culture. If you want to try various kinds of rice dishes, Taiwan is the best place for you. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I had several questions.、Uh, what What does a rice? Why? <laughs> excuse me. You said the rice wine in Taiwan wasn't that popular. What does it taste? How does it taste different than the one in、uh, Japan?、Uh, I think. <laughs>、uh, have you tasted rice wine before? No, I I haven't tasted the Taiwanese rice wine before.、Okay. Because, uh, but I think. Uh, uh, We often just use rice wine. In dishes, we don't directly. Yeah, and、it. then it cooks off, so I understand. So I'll ask another question on the popped rice.、Uh, how much does it cost for one of those bags of popped rice? Well, I think it's about one hundred dollars, NT dollars. I don't. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. Oh yes, we have we have a number of parents here, and they say they're nodding. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So that、yeah. would be about three U.S. dollars. Okay. Around U.S. And my and my next question is: In the United States,、uh, we have Rice Krispie treats, which are which is、uh, very similar to, I guess, a popped rice type deal too.、Um, Do you know if it tastes any different、uh, between Rice Krispie treats and the popped rice? Have you ever had any Rice Krispie treats from the U.S.? Anybody?、Uh, I I didn't try the、uh, rice crispy, crispy treats. Well, we'll give you a recipe. I'll, I'll give you a recipe, and you, you make some. <laughs> 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 But in, in the United States, we use butter and rice krispies, and、uh, normally marshmallows. And、uh, oh. it, it it goes together, but it's a, it's a real creamy type of treat. So I did. I noticed that you put like caramelized sugar or something in on that. I was just wondering if they ever put marshmallows in your pop treats. In in Taiwan, some vendors will use marshmallows to replace malt syrup.、Okay. Really? 
and uh, on the rice, explain to us how how would you eat rice in the morning, uh, lunch, and dinner? How do how do the rice dishes differ? Only some people eat rice for breakfast uh, nowadays, and it's made. The elderly food. usually uh, usually have rice in the morning. Okay. And it's also uh, made into rice porridge. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the rice porridge would be what consistency? As in the matter? No. Okay. I watch a lot of dramas, in, in my <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they, they talk about soups, and they talk about porridge, and they talk about rice. What is the difference between like rice soup, rice porridge, and and regular bowl of rice for breakfast? Uh, there are different kinds of rice porridge. Some are soup, like more soupier, and some are okay. More solid. Well, Mary, let me texture. ask you this question: What's the difference between soup and porridge? Porridge, we use rice to make porridge. So porridge is filled with rice and it only contains a little bit of water. Oh, but okay. soup is normally just water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, I think uh, people take different kinds of rice porridge um, in Taiwan. So uh, I think you mentioned at least the two types that you mentioned. One is uh, more watery. It, if they, if you can put it that way, and so there is less rice in that bowl of rice porridge and more uh, water, and then the other kind is more uh, porridge, probably more like your oatmeal uh, texture. Yeah, see, in in the states we have a, a a chicken soup that a lot of times they'll put chicken and rice soup and stuff like that, where it's a little bit of rice, a little bit of chicken, and an awful lot of soup. So you're saying a porridge is mostly rice with just a little bit of liquid. Right. That's that's the right. Actually, I, I was saying that there are two kinds. So some people like it with more water. Some people like it more oatmeal, porridge type. Okay. Good. Then 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 I, then I understand that one completely. I just always wondered that. And uh, <laughs> what did you learn by doing this? What was the question? What do what did the students learn by trying to explain about rice to people that aren't? You know, in, into rice as much. What What do you think you learned from doing this? So, what did you learn from uh, preparing for this presentation, or what did you learn from the content? Uh, in my opinions, um, I learned about uh, the various type of uh, rice breeds. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, in the United States, we have like a highly polished white rice that that has very little taste. Uh, we also have a brown rice, which is uh, a, a wild rice, and the wild rice has a lot better taste. What type of rices do you normally have there in Taiwan? Uh, What's the normal kind that we eat? We often eat Japonica rice, okay. which is uh, white rice. <laughs> But Mary, it's not the same as it is here in the States, is it? I think the rice, the, the type or the breed is a little bit different. And it actually is also different in Korea and Japan as well. Uh, when we uh, got there, we found out that uh, people eat different breeds of rice. Yeah, that's what I thought. Even in Asia. I, I don't know. I can't see anybody eating a whole lot of American rice. It, it, it doesn't really have much of a taste, but if you go to like a Korean restaurant or a Chinese restaurant here in the States, the rice tastes so much better. So I, I just assume <laughs> uh, somebody knows how to cook it a lot better than we do. <laughs> that was very good. Very well done. I, I really liked the, especially the video, and I, I liked the, uh, about the rice wine as well. Yeah, uh, Michael, we have yeah. Uh, students from six or seven schools here today, and okay. we have three presentations. Okay. So everyone just heard that you were going to share the crispy rice uh, treat recipe. So uh, <laughs> we will be waiting for your recipe. Yeah, I, I, will, I will send you several. Uh, we used to do it for fundraisers. It's real easy to do. I don't know. I think they sell Rice Krispies there, but it could be any kind of popped rice. But uh, it's... Uh, 
and it, it, it you, I think you'll enjoy it. Just see what they like. The different. Oh wow, we got some new high school kids. <laughs> so you, are, they will tell you how uh, what grade they're in and how old they are, and they're actually uh, yeah. they were actually here last uh, month as well. So um, perhaps you can start by introducing yourself. Hello, everybody. I am Ashley, and I am in fourth grade. I am Anisha, and I am in seventh grade. I am Oscar and I am in second grade too. I'm Cindy and the grade of seven. Today we would like to talk about the food that is made from rice, fried rice and rice ball. Rice has always been our major food. You can see rice with our three meals every day. In Taiwan, the weather is very suitable for growing rice. From planting to harvesting, it usually takes about four months. So we can have two to three harvests a year. Now I am going to show you a picture that a farmer planted rice in Taiwan. The first picture is some farmers planting the rice. The second picture is the rice become ripe. Wow. The second one is the farmer harvesting the rice. The last one is a rice field ready for the next planting. Now, Anisha will tell you more about fried rice. Fried rice is a common meal in Chinese food. You can eat it for your lunch or dinner. There are different kinds of fried rice, such as seafood fried rice pork fried rice and beef fried rice. The base ingredient is pork with onion and egg. If you like beef, you can put beef with onion and egg. When they fry together, they become a delicious dish. This is the picture of seafood fried rice. The second one is beef fried rice. Well, we have fried rice. We usually have soup with it. You can have pea soup or egg soup. Now I am going to talk about rice balls. For our breakfast, we eat rice too. Rice ball is a traditional breakfast. As kids, we love triangle rice ball. It is one kind of rice ball too. When we eat triangle rice ball, you take seaweed and use it to cover the triangle of rice. There are different flavors inside. Chicken and tuna are very popular flavor. Sometimes we eat it with milk tea or soy bean. We can buy it in convenience stores, such as 7-Eleven. There are open 20 four hours a day. It means you can buy it in any time. For traditional rice balls, the shape is oval. The ingredients are a little different from triangle rice balls. There are eggs, pork, and vegetables inside. Usually, grown-ups like to eat traditional ones because they will fill them up. In fact, that is very easy to make it yourself. Now I am going to show you how to make them at home. First, patty, first make patty of bread. <laughs> Those gloves are a little big. <laughs> so what are you doing? 
You're blackening the rice? Yes. <laughs> then put, you can put your ingredients, such as eggs, pork, and vegetables inside. Oh, good. You yes. might want to okay, hold the microphone for her, otherwise you, would, you wouldn't have to wear the gloves yes. anymore. <laughs> okay. Are you going to take off the gloves yeah. now? No? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's going to show you the, the rice ball that she has just made. And uh, perhaps you want to walk up closer to the camera and show it to Mr. Cunningham. Wow, yes. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mary, do they cover it all the way around or no? Yeah, you, you should. You should be able to cover it all the way so that it actually is in the ball-like shape. Okay. Right. And uh, it, it's a quite interesting and amazing that they uh, memorized all their uh, oh, yeah. presentation I mean, I, content. We have high school kids who cannot speak English as well as those uh, students. That's very good. Yeah, okay. So they're going to wrap up. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I'd like to see them take a bite of that, though. <laughs> you know the 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 present the the person that was presenting and also showing you how to make the rice ball. She was yeah. very excited yeah. to be making this because she gets to eat it afterwards. I know that <laughs> it looks so good. Okay, done. So now you made it more like a ball shape. And that is pretty that is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> and how much how how many people would that feed? Just one person or one person. Okay. And they're gonna show you a video, I think. Yeah. Oh good. Uh, there is a traditional rice shop. The woman is making the rice ball. There are some ingredients, and you can see there have some eggs, dry vegetable, and peanut powder. For me, my favorite rice ball is chicken flavor. And I like to eat that in the bonus snake. Um, that she will make it together and wrap it tightly. Because rice is very important in our life, we use rice to create many different kinds of rice food. Rice plays a very important role in our daily food. We enjoy it a lot. We hope you also love it. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you. That was very good. That was very Do you have questions for our little kids? <laughs> They're oh. very excited to answer your questions. Yeah, I'll go ask a couple questions. Uh, how does it make a difference if you have to have a lot of moisture in, the, in, in that? Or if you just had all dry ingredients, would it taste a lot different? Or do you put in, you know, like different 
something make it a little more moist. I was wondering. You understand now? Yeah, I'll put it you this way, that? Nate. This might be better. What's your favorite type of rice ball? So, what do you usually like inside your rice ball? Uh, I like pork and some vegetables, eggs inside. Okay. Anybody else? Something different? What else? Tuna? Yeah, some people like tuna fish inside. Oh, yeah. I, I would think it would be really good. What does the rice taste like on the outside? What What does that rice taste like? <laughs> Is it chewy? Would you say the rice ball, the rice outside, the rice ball is chewy? A little bit? The outside rice is a little chewy. Okay. And when you make it, how long before you have to consume it? How long of a shelf life does it seem like it'd be a short uh, shelf life? You just make that it in question, the spot or what? That question would have to be directed to the parents. No, <laughs> One hour. One hour. The parents will say one hour. Okay. <laughs> because okay. usually uh the students are consumers and they just you know eat it right away after the <laughs> Well, Mary, I thought they were making it for their parents. <laughs> <laughs> they do such a good job. I, I think you got some ringers in it. You got some professional uh people that are cooks. Yep. And they uh, mostly would like to make it for themselves, I would think. So and usually people eat it right away. That would be, you know, that, a That's why I thought you're making consider. Yeah. Now, this last picture slide that you have up, they have all kinds of pretty decorations and stuff on it. They don't normally would do this. It would normally just be like a regular rice ball, right? Right. And this is probably for fancier, uh, you know, for shops that you can uh, sell better. Okay. Or maybe like. Do they have it like when they have a party or something? They might would make it, you know, a theme or something. Yes, that is correct. Okay, good. So when you have your next birthday, you want all the kids to make a nice little birthday rice ball cake. Right? <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. That was very good. That was very impressive. Yeah. Uh, uh, congratulate both your parents and your teacher. That was uh, very well done. Okay. Thank you. And they are students and teachers from Nanto High School, from a proximity school. And um, they are here for the first time. And this is the first time they are presenting live presentations uh, for international video conference. So they're very excited to begin. Hi, Mr. Conahan. How's it going? Uh, oh, it's going great. I, I'm just <laughs> My name is Terry, and, and we are from Nanto Senior High School. Wh where is that and located today, at? Uh, it's, away? it's located in the middle of Taiwan. I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Okay. And today we're going to introduce uh, the representative food of Asian rice food culture. And today's presentation is divided into four sections. And I will start with its origin. And rice noodles originated in the Qin Dynasty, which is around 200 BC, about 2,000 years ago. And geographically, the southern China has grown rice for thousands of years, whereas the north has grown wheat. Right. So people living in the north are used to eating noodles as the main staple. So, uh, as the main staple, right? Yeah. And historical records suggest that when northern people immigrated to the south of China, they were not accustomed to eating rice, mm -hmm. and they missed noodles very much. So rice noodles are therefore invented. Oh, okay. And over time, the, over time, the varieties of rice noodles have been introduced around the world and becoming especially popular in Southeast Asia. And in the next slide, you can see a map of Taiwan and Xinzhou Fenyuan and Puli 
are the most well-known places where rice noodles are produced. Okay. A lot of people would have questions that, why do those places produce best quality rice noodles? Puli and Fengyuan have three things in common. First, they both located in the mountains. Second, they grow lots of rice. Third, because of the pure water from the mountains, rice growing there is very sweet. Okay. And as a raw material for rice noodles, the pure water makes it a special flavor. And as for Xinzhu, it is located in the east side of Taiwan and facing strong wind from the northeast. Oh. And the wind is called, uh, the wind has special names. The wind is called Northeast Moonsun. And it's benefits Xinzhu in drying rice noodles. Yeah. Okay, I ask a quick question. I know okay. there's a lot of volcanic activity. Is there a lot of volcanic soil there in the middle of Taiwan too? That does that help the rice grow? <laughs> I know you have earthquakes and stuff. Do you have a lot? Oh of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <coughs> Continue. I'm sorry. I was just really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, we visited Zhengyu rice noodles factory, and we bought some rice noodles. As you can see, this is the rice noodles manufactured by Zhengyu Rice Noodles Factory. The factory is located in Fengyuan, which has a plenty of rice noodles factory nearby. Uh, this is the picture of the Zhengyu Rice Noodles Factory. And now I'm going to introduce the production process. Step one, throw the rice flour and cornstarch, wheat flour and water into the mixing machine. All the material become like a dough after mixing. Step two: put the dough into an extruder and it will be extruded into a three. Step 3. Boil the rice noodles and then cool and rinse them in water. Step 4. Molding. You fish out the rice noodles and then spread them equally on the grid and then make them into the shape of rectangle. Step 5. Dehydration. You put the wet rice noodles inside, to a, inside a drying room, which is at temperature of 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. But traditionally, we use sunlight and wind power to dry the, the rice noodles. But due to the air pollution, we don't use that anymore.
Step six, packing. After you dry those rice noodles, you put them in the plastic bag and then seal them so that you can sell them. Did you know that our rice noodles has broke the Guinness World Record? In 2009, in Shinju, the government there decided to held a rice noodle and meatball festival. The resident there gather up and, and then make the longest rice noodle, which is about 390 meters long. Wow. Can you wow. even believe that? It is even taller than the Eiffel Tower. Wow. And now, Becky and Be Becky and Hillary will sh show you how to make rice noodle. Rice noodle can either be served with soup or stir fried. Today, we would like to show you how to stir fry rice noodle in a fast and easy way. First of all, we need to soak the rice noodle in warm water, which will probably take 10 minutes. In the meanwhile, while the rice noodle are soaking, you can prepare the ingredients. The ingredients include lots of veggies such as half of cabbage, one onion, some celery, one carrot, some fungus, and some dried mushrooms. If you are a meat eater, you can also prepare some dry mushrooms and dry shrimps and minced pork. We cut all the veggies into slices. One thing is important, before cutting the dry mushrooms, we need to cook, we need to store the dry mushrooms into the warm water as well. But remember, do not throw the water away since it can be safe for that use. Once all the ingredients are ready and the rice noodle are drained, we are ready to cook. We heat the pan first and pour some oil and pour mushrooms, onion, and dry shrimps into the pan. After the yeah. comes up, we then put the rest of all the ingredients into the pan. The rice noodle comes the last. Don't forget to add the water, which is used to soak the mushrooms. If the water is not enough, you can also add the stock or water to keep the dish moist. The final step is to add some sauce. In addition to salt and pepper, we have a secret weapon, soy sauce. The soy sauce is made from greens. It can add flavor and, and stand the noodles a darker color. When the noodles soak and toasting in the sauce, they will become loosened up and available. Cover the pan and continue to cook for five minutes until it is done. Here comes our final product. Wow, that looks really good. The stir fried rice noodle is easy, healthy, fresh, and totally delicious. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, how uh, you, how much does it cost for a bag of those noodles that they were show like he has right there? How much would that cost? Uh, perhaps uh, sixty NT dollars in Taiwan dollars. Okay. Yeah. Two U.S. dollars. Yeah. Right. About two U.S. dollars. And yeah. How many How many servings would you get out of that one bag? <laughs> parents, another question for parents. Uh, in my perspective, I think. Six people, six people, six people. Can. Okay, so uh, they have different opinions, and uh, we will take the average six. six okay, servings. so I mean, it would serve a family at least, then, correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then my next question would be in Taiwan, uh, when uh, 
the people came from China to settle into Taiwan in the late 40s. Were they, were they mostly uh, wheat noodle people or rice noodle people? Uh, people come into Taiwan, I think, uh, they're used to eating noodles in Taiwan. Right. Yeah. But was it, was it yeah. wheat or rice? Wheat or rice. Mine has a wheat. 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 Okay. And now today, yeah. which is more popular, wheat or rice? In Taiwan? Rice. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Because okay. the, the, uh, the weather, the weather permitting, so rice growing in Taiwan oh, yeah. is... Uh, yeah, I, I would think you could get rice grown most around the year in Taiwan where wheat wouldn't grow that much. So I was just thinking that so the people had changed their, uh, uh, their uh, so they changed from the late 40s of wheat eating to maybe more rice eating today. Have you ever tried yeah. that same recipe with wheat noodles? Does it taste any different? Uh, in my opinion, I, I haven't tried it in a week. Okay, yeah. well, so yeah. in other words, it's probably non-existent, so. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I would, I just assume that that would be a very good taste. Yeah. Now, if you were going to describe this to somebody that has never eaten rice noodles before, how would you describe it? Uh, rice noodles have uh, special characteristics, and it's, uh, it looks uh, crystal than normal noodles and then it's thinner than the noodles so it's it's very special okay and what did yeah. you learn from doing this and doing this i i learned uh, th uh this bag when i when i find uh this factory um ma mating this rice noodles mm -hmm. and i found that uh mm, so you actually went to the factory that yeah I know that that was so yeah. loud. did you what did you, you find interesting at the factory did you know how they made the noodles in the before you went there oh yeah no and was Sorry. there anything that was really surprising and how they made the, the noodles and I, I I found out uh, the, the when people making rice noodles and the steps is very easy when I when I go into the factory in person, I, I found out this, yeah. It's a lot more complicated than it looks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then- You say uh, that it's easier than it Yeah, looks, easier. Than you imagined? E yeah, e easier than I imagined. Oh, I've never yeah. even, I've ever imagined, yeah. Oh, wow. And how many people were working at that factory? Oh, about 10 people. Oh. <laughs> 10 people, yeah, for her. And uh, before before you before you today, what was what was your biggest fear about coming on TV or not TV but doing a video? <laughs> what, what what were you worried about? Before you were presenting today, yeah. were there any what kind of worries did you have yeah. before coming uh, today? I'm Anxiety. very nervous and I'm very uh, worried about I forget forgetting uh, some words. Okay, okay, I want to express okay, to you. Okay. Yeah. And 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 you guys did such a great job. I don't know why you worry. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Really good. I'm very nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Mary has a couple of a year or so ago. Mary had somebody actually cook yeah. something, and then all the electricity blew out. So that, that, I like right. that. <laughs> and in there. And that. That's that's gotten a whole lot better on that. Yeah. Uh, so you miss you. You really uh, are very observant. Yeah, I know. I was in there, Mary, <laughs> not again, Mary. You know, I know it's really late, but it, it, you might just go out in the darkness there. Uh, right. And you would eat this for dinner, or you—I mean, would you eat this for uh, your evening meal, or would you eat this for lunch? Uh, in my opinion, I, I always eat uh, in our in my family of uh, in my family uh, night. Okay. Uh, for dinner. Dinner. Yeah, dinner. Yeah. How about the other families? Do you eat it for lunch or dinner or both? Yeah. Uh, in school, we have uh, this for lunch. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's quite common uh, to have this dish for lunch as well as dinner. Oh, good, good. And it, it seems to be very healthy. Now, the soy sauce you use, what type of soy sauce was that? Yeah. Is that a special kind of soy sauce or? 
You said it's a secret weapon. Yeah, it was a secret weapon. It's dark soy sauce, not light soy sauce. Yeah, it's a secret weapon. Yeah, it's a secret weapon. Yeah, it's a different kind of soy sauce, probably different from the ones you purchase in the States. It's dark, thick soy sauce. Yeah. It, uh, it's made of black bean, black bean, bean, black bean soy, soy sauce. sauce. I hadn't gone to a, a, a store where it was just pure, you know, like Chinese or Korean or something yet, but it's very difficult to get a variety of soy sauce here in the States. Most of our soy sauce does not taste the same. And the other, what type of the other oil was that, Mary? Well, what kind of oil? What kind of cooking oil is that? Vegetable. Vegetable? Oh, vegetable, vegetable oil. Soy bean you don't thing? suggest like olive oil or anything? In Taiwan, do we it's use almond soy, soy bean? Okay, soy. Okay, soy. And uh, how much would that cost to make altogether? <laughs> Any idea? No, no idea. We have no idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Carrots. <laughs> I, I think it's Harris. pretty uh, cheap. Really? Yeah. Well, no, it, it seems to be less expensive. I was just saying, it seemed to be very good. I, I don't know. I'm just flabbergasted to, to think of uh, of being able to eat all that good food like that. And uh, I wish we could get a little bit more. Our rice noodles are not near as well packaged and as pretty as that, to, to be sure. We just do not have the selection. Uh, there is rice grown in uh, Southeast Texas and there's rice grown in Louisiana, but most of it's for export. And most of our rice is highly polished. It comes like in boxes. And uh, we yeah. carry some, we even have noodles. And then a lot of our noodles are those hard noodles, you know, like chow mein noodles that are, you know, that are really um, packaged, I guess, with a lot of preservatives. But we have very few just regular noodles that you can cook. Yeah, you, uh, you can come to Taiwan to, to eat real tradition rice noodles. Oh, you know, nice I really would like yeah. to. Uh, one time I would love to go to Taiwan. I'd like yeah. to actually go to China too. Welcome to Taiwan. Yeah. I've shared with Mary before, but my relatives started out in Korea and moved to northern China and then moved to India. So uh, historically, I would love to uh, at least get to sample some of the food before I uh, leave. Uh, any other things that you would like to add? I sure do. I wanted to show, share with you today, real quickly, two uh, presentations from the Ukraine, if I could. Okay. Okay, well, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, so, you. thank you very thank much. You. Uh, we will move. We'll move the uh, table and the uh, ingredients and everything away. And uh, Mr. Cunningham will show you. A presentation from. Yeah, we have Ukraine. sandwiches, and let me try to get up real quick. The Ukrainian uh, school sent their PowerPoint document to Mr. Cunningham so that they can they won't they cannot be here today because of their holiday, but they want to share their presentation with you as well. Yeah. Okay. So that the presentation will be shown from Mr. Cunningham's site, which is Texas USA. Can you see it? No. I'll show it. I'll try to show it. We're not seeing it yet. I, I, I got it now. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah, we got it. Yes, we do. Good. It's on. Okay, this is called Ukrainian dishes with fruits. And uh, hello. This gentleman would like to introduce himself. His name is Krill. He's 16 years old. He's from the Ukraine. He goes to the Ukrainian Humanity Lyceum of Kiev. It's also affiliated with the National University in Kiev. Uh, and there are some facts about Ukrainian cuisine. Ukrainian cuisine is diverse in elements of various neighboring European countries, especially Russia, Poland, Germany, uh, Hungary and, and the Turks. Remember, the Turks actually uh, originally came from Mongolia. So uh, you also see a lot of Chinese influence. And uh, you also see a lot of uh, uh, different types of uh, rice and different issues in too. 
pre, uh, his presentation is going to be devoted to fruit dishes. Welcome to Ukraine. Trying our delicious food is definitely mentioned in what to do. And there's a picture of the Ukraine, and he is from the area. It's uh, Michael, in are you showing the slides, uh, the next slide, because we're still on the first slide? Oh, wow. Supposed to show the next slide. Oh, now it is. Okay, is it showing now? Let's go back. Yeah, uh, but you skipped the uh, second one where the, yeah, the student there's wanted a picture to of the. <laughs> there's a picture of the young man. Uh, Krill, uh, this is a little bit about the Ukrainian cuisine. Again, I told you it's very diverse. It goes uh, all the way from uh, almost your part of the world to uh, everything in between. And a lot of it was brought by the Turks who were, uh, you know, Mongols chased east. Now, here's a picture of the Ukraine. Uh, this is Kiev, where he's from. And here's Chernobyl. You may have heard of Chernobyl because Chernobyl, north of uh, Kiev, is where the nuclear reactor blew up. This is the area of um, Crimea. This is kind of controversial. Russia is controlling it now. Yalta was a famous conference in 1945. And if you know about the Crimean War, uh, this is the area that took place there. Dumplings with cherries. Okay, uh, I thought this was kind of fascinating because in your culture, you'll see a lot of dumplings. I've never seen a dumpling with a cherry before, but this is how they would serve it. And this is the recipe. Ingredients. One can of pitted tart cherries undrained, or you could get fresh cherries. One cup of sugar divided. One cup of all-purpose uh, flour. One half cup of water one teaspoon of baking powder, and a third a cup of milk, three tablespoons of butter melted. Uh, steps, you put it in a large saucepan, you combine the cherries with the juice and three quarter cup of sugar and water, you bring it to a boil, you reduce the heat and you cover and shimmer. Meantime, in a small bowl, you combine the flour, baking powder, lemon peel, salt, and remaining sugar. You drop by the tea, uh, ta uh, tea tablespoons into the shimmering cherry mixer and cover and simmer for 20 minutes. Okay, and this is what the, the fruit looks like when it's dried. Uh, oh, excuse me. This is stewed fruit, okay? Uh, yeah, we're gonna show what stewed fruit looks like. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you would take honey, prunes, pears, dried apples, raisins, and water. You prepare the dried fruit before cooking. The, I can't pronounce it. U-Z-V-A-R, sorry. To do, <laughs> wash them with warm water and pour them for 10 minutes with cold water. You pour five liters of water into the pan. You put the pears, the apples, and cook at low heat for 15 minutes. Then you add the prune and raisin so to the pickles, pickles, and cook them for 15 minutes. Apple pancakes. These are really, really popular in different places. Okay, you, you, you take uh, 500 grams of sour cream, two eggs, six tablespoons of sugar, two glasses of flour, and five apples. You mix the eggs, uh, sugar, and sour cream. You add the flour and stir pro properly. You grate the apples and add it to the mixture. You heat the frying pan, you pour some oil in it, and then you cook your uh, pancakes. Absolutely, if you never had them, uh, they're very, very delicious. Uh, a lot of times people eat them with just butter without any syrup. Uh, strawberry jelly. Uh, when I was a kid, almost everybody made their own jellies at home. I don't know if people make jellies anymore, but they don't here in the States that much. But here's the ingredients for strawberry jelly. And the ingredients are 500 grams of mashed strawberries, one glass of sugar, one glass of dry wine, and one glass of water. You mash the strawberries, you add the water, wine, and sugar, and boil it for 10 minutes. It cools down for five hours and you serve it with a little bit of cinnamon.
Uh, baked apples. Are baked apples very popular in Taiwan? No. Okay. Uh, if you've never tried them, they're actually really, really delicious. Watch what they'll do here. They have four big apples, one uh, egg, 150 grams of cottage cheese and vanilla. You make a hole on top of uh, each apple. You mix the cottage cheese, egg, and vanilla. You put the apple in the pan, and you bake it for 25 minutes. I've seen them put other things inside the apple, too, and it's really, really good. Uh, a lot of hot apple stuff is pretty good. Okay, cherry pudding. Cherry pudding, you put uh, 500 grams of cherries, 200 grams of sour cream, five eggs, six tablespoons of flour, one teaspoon of flour. You mix the cherries in there. Uh, and the other material, you add the cherries to the mixture again, and then uh, you bake it for an hour at 180 degrees. Should be probably, excuse me, I'm sorry. 180 degrees, I don't know if that's Fahrenheit, or so. can't be Fahrenheit. Oh, you bake at 180 degrees. I gave the recipes to your teacher, so if uh, she has an email, if you want any of these recipes, uh, they're actually really good, and they have the links right here too, where you can actually see the uh, some videos that they have. That was the first one on fruit. Let me get the second one. Okay, and uh, momentarily I get the second one up. This is sandwiches. Now, in the, in the West, can everyone see that one? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, this is from uh, Maxime, again at the Ukrainian Humanities Lyceum, uh, Kiev. And uh, these are different types of sandwiches. Now, in the West, instead of using rice as the, uh, uh, excuse me, they will use breads. And in the Ukraine, you'll see all kinds of different uh, breads, really delicious. Sandwiches, you have cold sandwiches and you have hot sandwiches. They're going to talk about cold sandwiches first. And cold sandwiches, you'll see, may come in several layers. You'll have tomatoes, lettuce, uh, and maybe several different types of meat. The first sandwich is called an open face sandwich. These are sandwiches where you would just have bread on the bottom. Now, this looks like ciabatta bread or something of that effect. They will have uh, a little lettuce on top, tomatoes, and uh, different forms. This is almost like a thinner, like almost like a pizza type of crust that they would put on top. Open sandwiches that make use of one kind of bread with stuffing on top. Slices of bread can be cut in different ways, like triangles, rounds, or squares. You can get pretty decorative. Okay, then you have the regular cold sandwich, a plain sandwich, which is made up of two slices of bread. Uh, they like day-old bread. Now, much of this is actually from the bakery. And if they toast it on which butter can be spread, its crust may not be removed, depending, it can be removed. This looks like they'll have seeds and so it looks like a rye bread. Uh, I already said that. Okay, yeah, here's two pictures. This is a white bread and this would be a, looks like either a light rye with caraway seeds and this would just be a regular uh, bread. Sometimes when they come in half, they serve them with toothpicks, especially when you have multi-layers. Tea sandwiches. These are small, uh, like hors d'oeuvres. A lot of times served uh, regular sandwich cut up. The crust is always taken off and cut, and then normally topped with a, uh, a, 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 maybe a pickle, an olive, or something else, and then normally they will also put a toothpick in it. There are small fantasy sandwiches made from delicate light ingredients, and the bread has been trimmed with the crust, like I said. Uh, added to varieties, and they're good for canopies. You have wrap sandwiches. Wrap sandwiches are really popular. Uh, you have like a burrito, 
uh, here in our part of the world. Uh, you may have pita bread or you'll see other types of wrap with a flat bread in the Mediterranean. Uh, very similar to like the ingredients inside of the, your rice uh, balls. And uh, you can actually see circles. Sometimes they'll put tuna in it. In our part of the world, they probably will put maybe beans, cheese, and uh, meat. Uh, just a wide variety here. I think you had your cut up lettuce, onions, and stuff, lettuce, and you go. Then you have uh, next one, our hot sandwiches. And a hot sandwich, regular hot sandwich, a simple hot sandwich, uh, hot filling, including meat, and they would warm it up, normally topped with a cheese. And uh, sometimes people will put a tomato in it. The problem is when you heat up with a tomato, they always will put it. It's difficult. So sometimes I've actually seen them heat sandwiches up, put the tomato on top, then stick a little toothpick in it. And then you open this up because the bread and cheese are kind of melted together when you heat it up. It tastes really good. You can do it in the microwave very easy here. Open face hot sandwiches. Uh, you have one piece of bread. This happened to have cheese and tomatoes and, and stuff in that. And you would just dig in with a fork or sometimes you could pick it up with your uh, hands and eat it. Uh, cheese or gravy are really popular. Uh, a lot of times it's real popular for a street food or a very inexpensive pizza. Uh, grilled sandwiches. Here you see grilled chicken. Uh, a panini grill on it, your brown hot oven, and then the sandwiches. Again, you'll normally have a cheese, and then sometimes they're even put into, uh, we have like little griddles, and they, uh, they cook it inside the griddle there. That's that uh, panini grill, uh, George Foreman type of grill, if, if they have that over there. Then we have fried rolls. Uh, these are like hot dog buns are cut, and then filled with all kinds of uh, good deals. Now, in uh, our culture here in, in the States or in the Southwest part of the United States, this would be burritos, quesadillas, and that's what you see right there. You don't see a quesadilla. Actually, this is uh, Ukrainian. Okay, then you have pita bread. Pita bread in some countries, including the Ukraine, is also known as Arabic bread. It's a flat bread, Lebanese bread, Syrian bread. Sometimes Armenian bread is slightly uh, leavened, baked from wheat flour. It came from Mesopotamia 2,500 and went both ways, east and west. Flat breads are very, very good. Uh, you can pull it apart. You can deep fry them and you make uh, pita chips. Uh, you put hummus, which is a, a dip from chickpeas, and you can eat on it. Um, very delicious. This is some of the food that you can get at uh, outside quick restaurants. And this is uh, like Ukrainian McDonald's. And uh, the spot appears at the window. It says sausage. It talks about the sausages and fried sausage. Uh, and uh, it's very, very good. I, I wish I could probably... It says 50 euros, so uh, 50 euro cents. So that would be approximately by a dollar to eat that. It's very inexpensive. And uh, that's what the, the people do in Kiev. Are there any questions? So uh, thank you, Michael, for presenting on behalf of Ukraine. <laughs> and uh, I would like to ask, invite students from Taiwan if you have any questions for Mr. Cunningham, either regarding the presentation, if he can, he will try his best to answer the questions for Ukraine, or if you have general questions for him about their dreadful situation in Texas, that would be answered as well, right? Mr. Cunningham? Yeah, yeah I'd be glad to answer anything. I, I, my family actually lived in Ukraine too, but I can't pronounce, so you know, it, it's sad. Uh, so, I, I noticed some of the commonality, especially with the rice balls and stuff, very similar to some of the rolled uh, wraps and stuff that we have. So if you just change the wrapping, everything else is the same. So, I mean, so, uh, I think you could, if you ever find pita bread or something like that, do they have pita bread there? Do we have pita bread in Taiwan? It, it's sort of like kaopi, right? Yeah. yeah, we have 
similar uh, okay, thing well, in I'll, Taiwan. I'll send you, I'll send you the Lebanese school. I'll give a good recipe how to make pita bread so you can actually try to make pita bread and then put the stuffing and stuff that you're going to do in the rice ball in that and then tell us what the difference would be. Excellent. We at uh, winter camps that we uh, make all the things that we learned during Food for Thought and the yeah. students will love that. Yeah, I think so it would be a, a really good idea. Okay, so we have questions for you. So, uh, yeah. Any more? Because you came in late. I can so, um, come to the front. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm curious that, uh, did you, uh, so. did you, did you fill the uh, uh, red wine into the stew fruits? Yeah, I do what with the red wine now? Go ahead. Uh, did you put red wine? Uh, did you put red wine into the stew fruits? Yeah, uh, you'll notice that the, uh, in that in that one strawberry, they did ask for uh, put in a a wine deal. I think it's just like what you add wine for some of the eggs and stuff. When you the wine gets cooked out, so you have no alcohol content, but it has something to do with uh, making things cohesive, uh, more uh, mix easier together. So in some cases, uh, it, it's a consistency why you need the wine to, uh, oh gosh, I don't know how to put it, uh, to just make it uh, come together, but not necessarily taste, but actually physically come together. Go ahead. Thank you. Next question. Uh, I would like to ask about the strawberry jelly. Uh, you said that the ingredients contain Wine. Yeah. Uh, why is it wine? Okay. There's something about the properties of wine when you put in the strawberries that end up, they, it gets cooked out. But uh, I've seen several recipes. They just took a recipe that they use there with the wine, but it, it, it saves some of the flavor of the strawberry and you lose the alcohol content. So there, there is a, a reason for it. Now, if we used to have canning here at school, and uh, it probably 20 years ago. And in the state of Nebraska, they used to be doing this all the time. And people would can all kinds of different jellies. Never you could use alcohol, but that was just an example there. If you're doing it at home and your parents were going to do it, they might suggest alcohol. If we're doing it at school, I wouldn't suggest the alcohol part. But in the, in, in the one strawberries, it, it ends up keeping flavor in. So it brings out the flavor, but it brings the out the flavor. Itself. Yeah. So you won't get drunk if you. Oh no no no! <laughs> Just like uh, in, in your example, when you when you use alcohol and you cook it and you boil it for ten minutes, all the alcohol is boiled out basically. So all the, you're not you're not going to get drunk on your on your uh, jelly. And the uh, tea sandwich sandwiches. Mm -hmm. So they, they contain tea, right? Oh no. Uh, think of English tea, you know, like uh, when English had tea time and four o'clock, they would serve a light snack. And that's where we got the idea of tea sandwiches. They were sandwiches served for a light meal, uh, many times associated with uh, uh, having like a party or something like that. It's more of an appetizer or an hors d'oeuvre in French. It's, it's, you wouldn't sit down for that because you have to eat about 10 of them before you got full. So it's just a very light snack. The mini sandwich that goes well with tea or coffee. Yeah, it goes with tea or coffee that they would have in the afternoon in between as a, as a snack, more than a, a meal. So this, all these foods, are those homemade or you can buy yeah. this? Well, all those foods were homemade and you could actually make those at home. And we're going to try to, when, when next month, we're going to try to have the recipes ahead of time so where you can maybe try some of them at your, at your house or, uh, or Mary will try some at school. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have another question coming by. Oh, we have lots of questions for you, Michael. You're very uh, yeah. popular. <laughs> okay, Mary, what, uh, could you please repeat it a second? I'm sorry. Could you repeat again? Louder? How do is open-faced sandwich? Do it layer by layer. 
Yeah, open face sandwiches. That's a good question. An open face sandwich. Uh, there's a lot of people like myself. I, I all of a sudden found I have a sugar problem, and I went to the doctor, and they said you couldn't eat so much bread and stuff like that. So there's a lot of people trying to be eating healthy, and two pieces of bread is too much. So what they do is uh, they'll, they'll do like one piece of bread, and a lot of times you can make it really really thin, and then you would uh, heat different things on top. Now, like. People like pizza, and pizza is not really good for you. But you could do almost the same thing by putting fresh tomatoes, putting uh, cut up uh, onions and and green peppers and stuff, and put cheese on top. You'd have less calories and be a much more healthy uh, result. Actually, I've actually even seen make pizza crust out of cauliflower now. So they're doing a lot of things for people to try to be healthy so we can be strong like you are. Thank you. We have two more questions. Okay, good. Okay. Hi, Michael. Uh, if you have a chance to come to Taiwan, what kind of restaurant would you like to try? If I had a chance Did you get to get that? I, I, the bell rang. If I have a chance to come to Taiwan, what? Uh, what kind of rice food would you want to, would, would you like to try? Oh, uh, which kind of rice noodles? I don't know. I, I'm not going to say this out loud, but I do <laughs> not appreciate noodles as much as some people do. And uh, I've never liked spaghetti because of the noodles, and I never like, I don't really like wheat noodles, so I've never really had good rice noodles, so I may would like rice noodles. Rice noodles look to be a lot better. Wheat noodles, like they were saying, lose consistency. They get really... Uh, uh, you know, moist and, and, and they're not, I'd like something a little more hard or crunchy or something to that effect. It's just me. Uh, I think that that's, that stir fried rice you, that you made looked really good. That looked uh, very healthy and it looked like that would be delicious to eat. I think I like something like that. Yeah. Last question. Okay. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> and how often do you eat pancakes? Excuse me, what do you say about the pancakes? Go ahead. And as a dessert or breakfast? Oh, no. Actually, this is really weird. Those apple pancakes are served for breakfast. Uh, now, in the United States, when we eat pancakes, we put a lot of maple syrup and stuff on. They're very, very sweet. People eat pancakes throughout the day. In the United States, we have a restaurant chain called International House of Pancakes and several other pancake houses, uh, waffle houses and stuff. And they're very popular and they, they will eat uh, in the middle of the morning. They will eat in uh, lunch. They will eat at that. And uh, the apple pancakes, if you make them by home, are really, really good. Uh, I, Mary, are there pancakes in Taiwan like that or no? Uh, yes. Okay, the, the difference between this and a regular pancake a lot of times pancakes are really, really flat. These are probably twice as thick as a regular pancake. You can definitely taste the apple in it. And uh, the, the combination of a hot apple and that, you get very sweet without having to put a lot of syrup and stuff on it. So it's a, it's a healthy, uh, a lot of people eat, it's a healthy way to eat pancakes. A lot more healthy than just dumping sure, uh, syrup on it. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Actually, yeah, a pancake is uh, not from uh, Taiwan. So uh, the pancake shops or pancake stands that we have here uh, probably are much influenced by the Western culture. Oh yeah. I, right. I've, seen, I've seen some pancakes, I think in Japan or Korea, but I, I think they had to do with meat and stuff. They weren't really uh, the same type of stuff. So I, I don't know, I, I was just saying, but um, if you ever try them, the, the kids would really like this. I think that would be, something that you would try at one of your boot camps that would be kind of interesting to do. Thank you, Michael, for today's Thank session. So uh, the schools and uh, all the teachers and the students from all schools appreciate uh, your coming on with us uh, for the connection and the much interaction that we had. And the students enjoyed uh, talking to you and inter interacting with you. So uh, thank you, Michael. Hey, Mary. Mary, I, I just like to say one thing. We, we've been doing this for about 10 years, and we've had a lot of people.
But I've never enjoyed this more than today. This was really, really, really good. I, I love to see the, the elementary school children doing it. I mean, if you can learn English and present in front of people that well, they're gonna they're gonna be amazing when they get up to your age. And the other high school that that was really really good. That it's just you do such a cr uh, great job. And I really would like to thank the parents as well. Uh, parents staying there that late. That, that is. That is, that is so thank you. You, you do not know how much of an amazing person you have with Mary there because she is uh, one of the few people in the whole world doing stuff like this. So I think that Mary and Brian and uh, the people that came before, you have uh, big shoes to fill, but it looks like they're going to fill them very well. Yeah, and thank you so much for allowing this opportunity. Oh, one thing, uh, Brian would like to add that uh, the, you were asking about the rice wine, the yeah. differences between the rice wine in Taiwan and Japan. He was saying that the uh, sake in Japan tastes a bit sweeter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I would have thought because uh, a lot of times when the cooking wines are not necessarily the same thing that you would drink with. A lot of people think that you would get drunk, but most of the wines that you are that you cook with are not the, the wine that you would actually really drink. And then it just cooked yes. out on, I don't know, I wish I knew more the chemistry but the food chemistry it just holds things together better yes that is correct that you actually uh, said that uh because it also loses the alcohol when it is cooked so there isn't much left of the alcohol after the dish is completed uh, thank you so much and, thank and you. what time is it there it's approaching half after nine in the evening oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, I know y'all really. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we have better hands to get thank there. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Bye. We have the teachers and the parents getting home.